Welcome to Central America. Do you recall the seven countries of Central America, the subregion of Latin America? Here they are. Guatemala, Belize, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and Panama. Since we now have a base to work with, having completed a detailed examination of Mexico, and because Mexico and Central America border each other, it makes sense to see what similarities exist between Mexico and Central America. First, they're both part of Mesoamerica. And I'm sure you remember that that term is a loaded term, it refers to both a physical location and the great indigenous societies that predate the arrival of the Spanish. So parts of Central America also have Indian populations and indigenous ruins from those ancient civilizations. Just like Mexico, Central America is mountainous and rugged. Just like Mexico, Central America is tropical. In other words, it's located in the tropical zone and has the climatic characteristics of the tropical zone. If you recall, I told you that about two thirds of Mexico is in the tropical zone. Most of the population, just like Mexico, is mestizo. Most people speak Spanish as their first language. And most people are Catholics, although there's a noticeable and growing American cell evangelical movement in many places in Central America. Obviously, there are differences as well, so let's take a look at some of those. As a whole, the population in Central America is poorer than the average person in Mexico. However, there are changes that are happening in many places in Central America, as they are throughout Latin America. And because of that, there's no denying that there's a growing middle middle class, at least pockets of growing middle class throughout Central America. The population is quite a bit smaller than Mexico, around 45 million total. However, population growth is still rapid in most countries, more along the lines of what Mexico had in the 20th century than what it has today. There are not a lot of natural resources in Central America. Some countries really have next to nothing. And about half the population works in the primary sector of the economy. Now, what exactly does that mean? Most countries have three economic sectors. In other words, their economy has three distinct parts. Here's what they are. First of all, kind of logically, is the primary sector. The primary sector is agriculture. On this planet, we can divide agriculture into two basic types, commercial agriculture, which means exactly what it sounds like it means. You're growing crops to make money off of these crops and subsistence agriculture, which in a lot of ways sounds exactly what it means, which is that you are growing crops to subsist on. In other words, you and your family rely on these crops. And if those crops do not come in, you're going on a forced diet. If you look at those photographs, the one on the left and the one on the right, can you tell which one is commercial agriculture and which one is subsistence agriculture? In the United States, we are all but perhaps a few unusual groups of people, commercial agriculture. The second sector is the secondary sector. The secondary sector is manufacturing. And then the third sector is the tertiary sector. The tertiary sector is the service sector. You can see here, teacher, McDonald's worker, medical workers. So what I told you was about half the population in Central America are in the primary sector. This means that they're farmers and a substantial population within that farming community are subsistence farmers. Now, there is a huge rural to urban migration that has happened on this planet in the last 50 years. So there are people who live in Central America who live around the cities who are engaged in two things. They're engaged in farming and simultaneously there are people from their family who go into the city to try and get informal jobs.